In last exercise, we worked with one variable to create the sensitivity table. Now we are going to work with two values to find the best place to put our distribution center, the yellow dot here, uh, in respect to its clients. To do that, the first thing we need to do is calculate the distance. So how do you calculate the distance? Well, take this client. Uh, it has a horizontal value. It has a vertical value. With those two values, you can calculate the value from this point to zero, right? Uh, um, the way you do that is by using the Pythagorean theorem. It looks like this. It should be very familiar. We need to calculate the, the C, so we're going to need this formula, okay? Now we need the distance A and B, um, but now we just calculate to zero, so what we need to do is we need to make it relative to the distribution center. That's going to be, that, that you can do by um, abstracting the, the, the place of this from this. I'll show you right away. So what we do over here is first we're going to create this formula. I'm just going to use A and B but without defining them yet. So I'll do that right away to make it easier for you. So squared, that's our formula. We need A exponent plus B. That's our formula, right? Now we need the A and the B. So I'll remove the A. Uh, it needs to be this value minus this value. Oh, sorry. So I'll remove the A, put brackets, get inside of it. This value minus this value. That's for the horizontal. B we, for B we do the same. We get this value minus this value. Now, this value will always stay the same, so that needs to be an absolute value. So it's not just B13, it's B dollar sign, and the same for C dollar sign. Oh, that's not a dollar sign, that's a dollar sign. Okay, so that's our distance. So now we can copy it for all the clients. That's it. Traveling is going to be easier. We just need to multiply the distance to the amount of deliveries. That's this. Again, we're doing it for our clients, and then we need the total traveling costs. A so lot of costs, no troll uh, place. Okay, so from this value to this one. There you go. And that's our totally traveled distance. So now the table. What we do is we start with, with saying that this is the total, right? Um, then what you see is that actually we, we know that the distribution should be somewhere between the four uh, clients, right? So we're going to end with 100 and we're going to be begin at 20 and then we're going to search this space. So I'll end with 100 over here, right? And then I'll say this value minus 10. That's 90, of course, but just to have them all over here. And I do similar over here. I start at 20 and then I say starting plus 10. 30, of course. This is just a stupid example. Think about bigger tables. So that's our table. The next thing to do is again select all the values, go to data, go to data table, just like we did in previous one. And now we have uh, row and a column input value. Like before, if you want a column input value, you have to look at this value. This value, in our case, is our vertical value, and this is our horizontal value. So our row needs to be our horizontal value, while our column needs to be our vertical value. That's it. That's our table. It looks like this. Of course, we have now two variables, so what we actually would like to see is how this looks in a three-dimensional, because before we had a two-dimensional, now we want a three-dimensional char. We're going to use 3D surface over here, and it's going to look like this. So again, this is series one, series two. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to move the whole thing. I'm going to put it over here and make it a bit bigger. There you go. Um, the first thing you see, it's all centered between 400 and 600. So we're going to change those values. Uh, format axis, we're going to change those values, the scale, 
starting from 650, oh, starting, that's minimum, starting from 650, it's never going to be smaller, and ending with, uh, I think the biggest one, the biggest one is, no, the biggest one is 650, the smallest one is never smaller than 450, so we're going to 450, 650, that looks better. Uh, keep 50, that seems good, yes, we're going to keep the other values, that's it. The other thing is, of course, see Siri over here, and over here it goes from 1 to 7, it should be going from 40 till 100, and this should be going from 20 to 60. So let's change the data, select data this time. We, we select data, it looks like oh, it looks like this, right? Um, so you already see over here our Y value, it's a formula. We're going to kind of copy-paste it and put it over here. But now it's not going to get from C24, uh, which is this, no. Uh, uh, yep, so what we're going to do is we need this values, right? So that's going to be 21 going from C to I. So 21, 21, and 21. And something similar, so, but I'm just going to copy this part, put it over here. Um, I need B, so it's not going to be C, but it's going to be B, and it starts, so C3, that's 1, 2, 3, that's 24, I should have started at 1, of course, but I'll just start with this, copy it, go to C1, C1 is 22, C2 is 23, now, you can ask, like, why am I not just putting the values in here? That's going to be clear in a second, because if I put the values in there and I change anything to my to my actual values over here, the table will be incorrect. While if I do it this way, uh, 26, if I do it this way, right, values are okay. And if I, for example, change this to, let's say, 120, everything changes, of course, right? But also over here it changes. And for example, change this to 30. You see, everything changes. Now you see that the center point is over there. So undo, undo. See, the center point is over there. Okay, that's our graph. So we kind of um, did the same as previous exercise, but finished with uh, uh, two variables. You can also use macros, so the way we're going to do that is, well, I'll put that in a different screencast.